Hey there guys, Matthew George here with FreeCCNAWorkbook.com and in this video I'll be discussing and demonstrating Lab 1-2 which is connecting to a Cisco device via console. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to connect to a Cisco 2501 using PuTTY and Secure CRT. PuTTY is a freely available terminal emulation application which you can obtain by clicking the PuTTY terminal emulator link here underneath the links navigation bar. By clicking this link, it will pop up in a new tab, and you can go here and download PuTTY by just clicking on the PuTTY.exe link. And when you download it, it will just be prompted to uh, save it wherever you want it. I've already downloaded the application and saved it onto my desktop for this video. Also, I'll be demonstrating how to use Secure CRT, which is the application that I'll be using throughout all the videos found on this website. Secure CRT offers a lot of features that PuTTY does not, such as the ability to have multiple tabs uh, and the ability to uh, configure buttons that send specific strings to uh, the device, as well as a chat window, which you have the ability to send uh, the same command to multiple tabs, which is pretty cool. I'll demonstrate those different features in a later video, but just for this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect to the Cisco device using a Cisco console cable. Now for the lab prerequisites, you're going to have to obviously have a terminal emulation application, whether it be PuTTY uh, or Secure CRT. You can use HyperTerminal, however, I am not going to demonstrate that, that application in this video. Uh, Windows 7 does not have HyperTerminal. Uh, Windows Vista does, however, you have to manually install it. And Windows XP actually includes HyperTerminal by default. HyperTerminal, like I said, is no longer included in Windows 7 because of licensing issues. Every time Microsoft sold a copy of Windows, they actually had to pay the original author of HyperTerminal a licensing fee. So needless to say, Microsoft got tired of paying the license fee and decided to omit that software from their, their latest version of Windows. So also another requirement is going to be a Cisco console cable. So commonly these cables are blue. Uh, typically when you buy a used Cisco router or a new Cisco router, uh, you get one of these cables. Uh, if you work at a place that utilizes Cisco equipment, they'll probably have boxes upon boxes of Cisco console cables where you can, I'm sure you can grab one if you ask your, uh, ask your supervisor. Uh, also, you're going to have to have a console port on your PC. If you don't have a console port, you'll have to purchase a USB to a console adapter, which you can buy off eBay or Newegg or some online store, probably for about 10 to $15. And these adapters will work just fine. Now for the lab objectives, you're simply just going to connect to a Cisco device using the console cable and establish a console session with the device. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my website here and click on PuTTY. And this is the, uh, the PuTTY configuration window. If you click on the serial bullet here, it will automatically configure PuTTY to use COM1 with the 9600 bits per second baud rate. If you have a built-in serial interface on your PC, most commonly it would be configured to use COM1. However, it can be configured to use COM2, 3, or 4. If it is using a different COM number, you'll actually have to backspace that and change the number yourself. But for my PC, it'll be COM1. You also have the ability to save the session. So if you want, I can call this Cisco console and save the session. Now if I exit out of PuTTY and reload PuTTY, I have the ability to just click on the Cisco console session and load it and it automatically loads back to the settings that I had saved. By default, a Cisco router's configuration, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Configurational register. Configuration register. I knew it was in there somewhere. The configure, the configure register will be set to 2102, which uh, has a baud rate of 9600 bits per second on the console port. However, different configuration registers will have different baud rates. So there's actually a website you can check out on Cisco.com uh, that will display the different baud rates per the configuration register settings. But for this Cisco 2501, I'm using the default configuration register, which will use a baud rate of 9600 bits per second. 
So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and click open here. I've already powered on my Cisco device before I started the video so that way I can save some time. And as you can see here, uh, the router has no configuration on it so it's prompted me to enter the initial configuration setup dialog. I'm just going to press no and press enter. And it will bounce the interfaces since there's no configuration on the interfaces. And we're waiting. Da -de -da -de -da. Come on. Cisco 2500 series platforms are definitely not the fastest routers out there. However, they do make great lab routers. So you can actually obtain these routers on eBay for as little as 20 bucks. So, which is pretty decent price. And as I discussed in my previous video, if you run 12.2 T15 Rebuild 17, you can actually use IP version 6 as well as OFP v3 and rip next generation which is IP version 6 rip so that's pretty cool press return to get started and there's the interface bouncing so now you can see I'm at the uh, the command line prompt and this is also known as user mode as denoted by the greater than sign so now that I've demonstrated putty I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate secure CRT so I'm just going to exit out of this and close the session and secure CRT and as you can see here I already have a serial COM1 session saved so I'm just going to delete this session and create a new session uh, with secure CRT you have the ability to uh, create different folders and among these folders you're going to actually create a hierarchy structure of different sessions for example if you have like a campus and it has uh, different buildings on the campus and then you have different floors on the on the building you can actually break it out into campus building floor and then device name which is pretty cool it's, it's very nice to uh, to have as a management so so I'm gonna go ahead and click here where it says new session is basically like a little server with a little star with a new new little star next to a piece of paper there I guess <laughs> And I'm going to go down to uh, Serial, click Next, and I'm going to change this down to COM1, and the default baud rate for the configuration register 2102 is 9600 bits per second. Uh, no parity and one stop bit, eight data bits. So I'm going to turn off the RTS, CTS, flow control, and use X on, X off, and click Next. And I'm just going to leave the name as default, however you can name it, whatever you want. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to go creative. I'm a console session. There we go. That works. So there we go. I'm just going to click I'm a console session and press enter. And voila. Now you have a console session established within Secure CR Team. And from this console session, you have the ability to issue commands such as show commands. Uh, for example, I'm just going to demonstrate the show version, um, which will show you the platform. As you can see, this is a 2501, and it's running 12.2.15t, rebuilt 17. So, other than that, I think this uh, video concludes the lab objectives for this lab. So, if you have any questions, feel free to post your questions down here. And I will respond to the questions. My responses will be in blue. If they're not in blue, they are not from me. So I hope this video has been educational for you, and thanks for viewing.